Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One, good vibrations at your service. I'd like to describe for you a special type of receiver called a direct conversion receiver, sometimes abbreviated to DC, not to be confused with direct current, of course. A direct conversion receiver. Now what that is, basically, is a very simple design for receiving Morse code CW, radio teletype, uh, phase shift keying, single side band, and other forms of mo uh, modulation that would ordinarily require a product detector and a super heterodyne receiver, but it's a very simple design. Signal comes in from your antenna to a tunable radio frequency amplifier which serves as a pre-selector and an amplifier. You have a local oscillator which is tunable over the range of frequencies that you want to receive and you mix the incoming signal with the signal from that local oscillator to get an audio beat note at the difference or sum of the antenna signal, the radio frequency signal coming in, and the local oscillator signal. So if these two signals are only different by a few hundred hertz, you'll hear a few hundred hertz here in the audio amplifier, which will then go to your headset usually. Rarely do direct conversion receivers drive speakers, although with a second audio amplifier you could certainly do that. Well, that's a really cool kind of receiver because it doesn't have any problem with images or birdies. You have no images because there is no other oscillator in there to create harmonics and to create mixing products at frequencies that you don't want. And you have no birdies because you don't get mixing products from other oscillators inside of your receiver. It's almost like a regenerative receiver. I don't know if you recall, if you're old enough to recall, a regenerative receiver. But this is sort of a variation on that theme and it detects or demodulates signals in pretty much the same way. The only difference is that instead of radiating some of that local oscillator signal out over the air, uh, which would create a, a very bad state of affairs in some cases. This uh, mixer circuit tends to isolate the local oscillator from the antenna, so you do not get that bugaboo. So that is a direct conversion receiver. Okay, that's the basic gist of that. Now what I'd like to show you after a brief foray into outer space to clear our minds is how the actual reception occurs in a panoramic or spectrum analysis view. Let's look at the local oscillator frequency on a horizontal axis like this. And then let's imagine signal amplitude along a vertical axis like this. Or we might say the loudness of our output signal or the what we actually hear, how much what we actually hear in our headset. How much volume do we actually hear? We tune our local oscillator frequency up and down, up and down. Let's say that we just are interested in the, oh, just for the sake of a uh, interesting argument, the 40 meter uh, amateur band, only the first 50, kil uh, 50 kilohertz of it. So the bottom frequency here is 7.000 megahertz, and the upper range is 7.050 megahertz. So we're just listening to the lower 50 kilohertz of the 40 meter amateur band and we can tune our local oscillator back and forth in that range. Now furthermore, let's imagine that there are signals in this band. 
and if we were to take a panoramic receiver, a sophisticated panoramic receiver, we might see them as pips like that. Maybe this one's at 7.010, this one's at 7.019, that one's at 7.024, that one's at 7.029, 7.033, 7 and 7.042. Let's just say, you know, frequencies like that. Now we tune our local oscillator up and down, and when that local oscillator frequency is different, from that of one of these signals by a comfortable listening pitch say 700 Hertz we'll hear a 700 Hertz audio tone in our headset now that local oscillator frequency might be 700 Hertz below the signal frequency or 700 Hertz above the signal frequency just for the sake of argument, let's say it's 700 hertz below the signal frequency. Now imagine that another signal comes on here, 700 hertz below the local oscillator frequency. Now we have competition between two different signals, this one and that one, because they both differ from our local oscillator frequency by 700 hertz. One of them is 700 hertz higher, the other one is 700 hertz lower, but the resulting audio tones are the same in both cases, so these signals interfere with each other in our headset, even though they aren't on the same frequency. They're actually 1400 hertz apart. How do we get around that problem? Well. You might have already guessed that there's one way to do it. If we move our local oscillator frequency either a little bit up or a little bit down, then one of these signals will increase in pitch and the other one will decrease in pitch. So we might raise our local oscillator frequency by 200 hertz and then this signal here will produce a 500 hertz tone in our headset and this signal here will produce a 900 hertz tone in our headset. Problem solved. Now we can separate the two signals. That is one way to get rid of the problem that sometimes occurs with uh, direct conversion receivers. It's known as double signal reception. Uh, it can be a wor uh, more of a bugaboo in the case of single sideband reception sometimes because you get monkey chatter on top of a, of a legitimate signal and things like that. It's not always a real good deal. But if you have a tunable audio filter in the audio amplifier section of your radio, then you can, in fact separate signals in a direct conversion receiver even when you happen to get one of these coincidences that is so unpleasant when it happens. One of the great advantages of a direct conversion receiver if it's properly designed and you take it out into the field and operate it with a battery is that you'll have almost almost no noise. Assuming you don't have thunderstorm spherics or ionospheric disturbances taking place, direct conversion receivers can be among the most the most pleasant to listen to of all CW or Morse code receivers. CW, my favorite mode indeed. Stangibalisco W1 GV signing off for now 73 and so long